Strauss, I'm the people of Central United Methodist Church. I'm more than delighted to be here. This is the first time I have visited Central, although on any number of occasions in the 60s and to the 70s, I was in and out of Atlanta quite a bit. Central Church, though I've known of Central for decades, decades, all my life almost. And so it's a great pleasure for me to be here. I want to thank Vance Ross for allowing me to uh, be a preacher this morning. So I do this with great nervousness. You've only had him for five months, I understand. You know that he's one of the finest preachers that I know of anywhere in our country. His creative ideas. So you have a you have a great peach, uh, prince and peach of the pulpit here, and I wish you very very well and him as well. I hope you will surround him with your care, with your loving support and encourage him in his work and in his life here in Atlanta. He's no stranger here, I know that. But oftentimes when a pastor moves into a great, great pulpit and great people like this, it's hard open up your hearts and lives in such a fashion that you receive him as God's chosen and as your brother and neighbor and relative in the ministries of Christ. So I give thanks for this appointment at Central and I wish you all the greatest success, the greatest effectiveness that you've ever had in the weeks and months ahead of you uh, here at Central. Now I know I'm on holy ground. I know this is a sacred place. How many generations of our people have worshiped here? The large number of pastors across the decades here. Of course, the one that I've known the best was Joseph Lowry. He and I are contemporaries, though he's a few years older than I am. <laughs> Not much, but two or three. <laughs> um, Joe was appointed here by Bishop Golden back in the early 60s, as I recall, about the same time that I was appointed to the Centenary Church in Memphis, Tennessee, which was 1962. So I've uh, known of your life and work, especially from Joe. Um, and, uh, I recognize that I'm in a place that has been consecrated by God and consecrated by you. And I hallow this privilege of his mind. I want to um, read what is my text for this morning. from the sixth chapter of the book of Judges, <coughs> reading from the 11th verse to 16a. <coughs> the sixth chapter of the 11th verse, and some of you will know this story well. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Oprah, to Joah, Joash, the Ephesorite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, Gideon, he said, to Gideon, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, 
If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers and mothers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us about a kingdom? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us in the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to Gideon and said, Go. Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in the Nassus, and I am the least in my family. And the Lord answered Gideon, but I will be with you. All right. But I will be with you. Yeah. Let us pray. How wonderful it is, God, that you have met us in this sacred spot, the Central United Methodist Church. You have, as you have promised to meet us in all those places that you have consecrated. We have met you already in each other's faces. We have met you already in the music. We have met you already in the warm sense of being human beings together and sisters and brothers in Christ. We've met you through the reading of the scriptures and the prayers and the litanies. Now we ask that you meet us in the preaching of the word. Yeah. Yeah. May all of us gather here. Hear not primarily the voice of the preacher, but hear your spirit. <coughs> troubling us, but encouraging us, and consecrating us to the transformation of life within us, to the empowerment of Central Church, and to the changes towards equality and justice for all yes, in this great city of the land. Yes, sir. Pray this boldly in your spirit. And in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, this is one of those mystical experiences out in the scriptures where it's written that the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and turns Gideon's life upside down in many different ways. Gideon is a warrior, he's a judge. He's a wonderful athlete. He has a strong reputation among his people. But the people of God who are in what is now Palestine and Israel <coughs> have now been occupied and conquered by the Midians who have come further from the east and conquered them. They've been the occupiers of their land for some seven or eight years. They are harsh occupiers. They wait when the crops are at their best and the harvest is going well. The occupiers then seize all the crops. When the vineyards are ripe, the Midianites take possession of all the fruit of the vines. So the Israelites experience great hardship. We in the United States, we in the Christian world rather, sometimes think that when God said to the people in Egypt, Go out into the wilderness and worship me. I am sending you to a new place and a new land. We think that, that occupation then is done in the same, but that of course is not the case. 
was decades and indeed centuries of struggle and the rest of it uh, in the new promised land. There's a parallel with we in the United States. Mm -hmm. This land was not unoccupied when we arrived here back in the 14th, 15th century. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There were 11 to 15 million people here, the anthropologists tell us. Yeah, tell it, known tell as the Indian people. So, in order to take this land, we had to take it from them, which is what's happened. Many Indian chiefs in the 18th and 19th century said they were invaded yeah. by those of us who now occupied the land and had the positions of power. Well, something of the same experience was in Palestine and Israel in the ancient world. All right. And so the people are suffering from being occupied, but they're suffering also because the land itself did not belong to them originally.